All right then, so the first thing we're gonna do with Riverpod is to make a simple provider. Now, what is a provider? Well, a provider is the main building block of something like Riverpod, and it acts as like a central place that we can define and encapsulate state, and then we can provide access to that state to multiple widgets within the application. Now, there's a few different kinds of providers that we can make in Riverpod. We can make read-only providers, which just allow read access to some state or computed value. We can make notifier providers, which allow changes to the state, and then they notify widgets, which consume the state when those changes occur so they can rebuild. We can make future providers, which are for working with asynchronous data, so forth and so forth. To begin with, we're going to make a very simple provider which just provides a simple read only value and that value is going to be a bunch of products which we can then consume on the home screen to list them all out in a grid so first then we need to make a new file for this provider and then make a list of products which we can then register in that provider so i'm actually going to make a new folder first of all in the lib directory called providers and all the providers are going to live inside here inside this we're going to make a new file called products underscore provider dot dart so we're going to make our provider inside this file but before we make the provider what i'd like to do is create some kind of list of products using this product model that we have over here remember where each product has an id title price and image so we're going to make a list of those products and then inside the provider we can grab that list and return it so let's make a new list by saying const and we'll call this all products. I'm going to set it equal to something. Before we do that, what I'm going to do is type this by saying it's a list. And then inside here, it's going to be a product. So I can spell this product. I'm going to click on this to import that product model at the top, like so. And then we set it equal to a list. Inside the list, I'm just going to paste in a bunch of different products. So each one is a product object with an ID, a title, a price, and also the image property, which is a path to the image file. So we can see shorts.png, karate.png, jeans, etc. All right, so that is our products done. All right, so the next thing we need to do now is to actually make a provider which can provide this data to widgets within the application. So to do that, we can make a new final value, which I'm gonna call product provider because we're providing products, right? And I'm gonna set that equal to a provider. This is something that comes from the Flutter Riverpod package. So if you click on that option, it should auto import that package for us at the top of the file. Now, this provider is probably the most basic kind of provider that we can have. And it's just gonna provide a read only state value to whatever widget wants to consume it. Now, in order to do this, we need to pass a function as an argument to the provider. And that function itself takes in an argument called ref, which we're not gonna use yet, but we will do probably at some point later in the course. But inside this function, all we need to do is return the value we wanna provide. In our case, that's the all products list we created up here. So we can just say return all products, and then at the end, a semicolon. And what this will do is provide this read-only value to whatever widget wants to consume this provider in the future. And this is the general pattern you're going to find with different kinds of providers where within them we return some kind of state value that we want to provide. So this is a really simple example. So let's make another read-only provider which will also return a state value, but this time we'll return a computed value based on the products. For example, we could just return all the products which have a price less than 50. So then below this one, I'm going to make another final variable. This time it's going to be called reduced products provider, like so. And again, we set that equal to provider. I'm going to click on this right here. And inside this function, we're going to return the product. But this time we're going to use the where method on the products to say only return the products where the price is less than 50, for example. So it just gets a subset of the products and returns those. So let's say return and then all products use the where method, which fires a function for each product, which I'm going to call P. We take it in as an argument right here. And then we do a check here and return either true or false. So I'm going to say if P dot price, so whatever product we're currently iterating inside here, if that is less than 50, then we're gonna return true right here, aren't we? And in that case, it's gonna be kept inside the return value, the return list. And if 
not, if the price is greater than 50, then this returns false and therefore it's essentially going to be filtered out of it. So we're not returning that. And this way, we're only returning products where the price is less than 50. Now, this actually doesn't return a list. This returns an iterable, this where method. So we have to turn it into a list by saying to list and invoking that method at the end. And that's pretty much it. So now we have two providers. We have this one to provide all the products and then this one to provide a subset of the products where the price is less than 50. And that's called reduced product provider. So we have those two providers now, but we're not doing anything with them. But we'll save this file. And in the next lesson, what we'll do is we'll try accessing this provider or consuming this provider data inside our widgets.